Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. Welcome to another episode of Social Jello with Angelo podcast. I am here with Baron Shepard. Baron, did I mess up your name? Nope. Nice. We're going to be talking about leg grabs in judo, as you saw in the title. So, I saw a post recently from Baron, but even before I saw it from Baron, I saw it in uh, BJJ Fanatics. I saw it in a few other BJJ pages that I follow. And everyone in the BJJ community is very excited to hear that they're now allowing leg grabs in judo. But immediately, I had to ask myself, what's that mean? Because I don't do judo. And my impression immediately is like, oh, can I shoot a double? Can I shoot a single? I come more from an MMA background. So now I'm wondering, well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Before I even go there, I need to have someone who knows their judo. Baron Shepard is a black belt judo instructor, as well as a Kajukembo instructor as well. I like to always mention that. We're not going to go too far into the Kajukembo in today, but for those people who know what it is. And for those who don't, at the end of this podcast is a What is Kajukembo podcast with UFC coach John Hackleman, who is UFC Hall of Fame Chuck Liddell's coach. Check that out at the end of this show if you want to know more about that. So, lay grabs in judo. Baron, what does that mean? <laughs> well, at, at one time, okay, uh, just like you said, single, double leg takedowns, any other leg techniques were allowed in judo, okay? Well, then eventually they were banned and 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 are currently illegal. Why were they, uh, so, before we go there, we'll, we'll stop right there. Why were they banned? Okay. Well, the the reason, the the one that's given the most common was they wanted to look distinctly different. They I think they were afraid it looked too much like wrestling, okay? It's like, oh, okay, all you guys are doing is just wrestling in a gi, all right? So, uh, so they eliminated the leg tackles because judo is a very dynamic art. And they wanted to see the bigger and higher throws because typically that's that's what people want to see. They want to see those those big throws. Uh, and then from there, there was another rule change because you, you, you can go back quite a few years and you can see both judoka in a white gi. Well, to make it more aesthetically pleasing and things easier to see, they put one in a white and one in one into a blue. So all these changes have come about, you know, last 20 years. Uh, and, and so, <clears throat> uh, but what happened was a lot of us old school judo were like kind of put out because they made leg grabs illegal because, you, you know, we, a lot of us did them. I was one, you, you know, that did them. But IJF changed the rules. And since then, you know, there's just been this big argument. Did taking leg grabs out of judo make it better or did it make it worse? Now, a lot of people are of the opinion that it, that it made it worse. And so that's where all this hype now is coming from because everybody's excited. They, they want the leg grabs to come back in and, and and stuff like that but the ijf is probably going to set new rules after the first of the year so speculation is that they're going to do it okay i don't think they're going to institute them to the extent that they let them do it before so as far as like completely reinstating all of them I think there's it's going to be under certain conditions. In other words, you could blast a double leg without putting a single hand on your opponent. But I think they're going to make little minor rule changes. Of, hey, you have to have a grip before you can try and take a leg. Okay. So I just think it's going to be under certain conditions and to what extent they're going to allow them. You know, I, I, that's the question. And uh, they got excited because there's a couple of tournaments in Japan that that they reinstated the leg grabs for. Um, I 
just don't know if that's enough to make the International Judo Federation go, well, you know what, let's let, let's change our minds. So, you said there's a couple of tournaments in Japan doing that. Is it the first time they've done it, or have they been doing that for a while? Uh, I think they just recently did it. Uh, um, uh, one was the Kodakon, and my understanding was it was – just a tournament, one tournament. I think there's only like a couple at most. And it was for a certain division. So I don't know that it's caught on across all of Japan yet. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I just, my opinion, this is my opinion, is if they're going to allow you to touch the legs, it's probably going to be in a more of a assist method. In other words, Say I turn to do a Sayanagi and I pick him up. Well, I can use one hand to maybe scoop up his leg and they'll, they'll allow contact in that capacity. Maybe they'll allow me to hit a Kata Gruma, a fireman's carry, more of the traditional way. So I think it's going to be something like that. I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if they go, hey, we're going to let you, we're going to let you blast single and double leg takedowns all, all day long. I think that's, I think that's what the BJJ guys want, though. <laughs> probably, probably. Well, there, you know, and, and look, there's an argument in judo, even for that, okay? Because you you look at somebody like Teddy Ryan, okay, the 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 French Olympic judoka. I mean, there, there's discussions about he wouldn't have reigned, you know, champion for as many years as he has if we were still allowed to do leg grabs because they figure because of his, he's so big, he'd be susceptible to that. Okay. The flaw in that thinking is why would a judoka not train to counter leg attacks? I mean, you're an Olympic caliber athlete. You're going to train to do that. So it, it's, you know, it, it, it's just one of these arguments where could it level the playing field? Yeah, for a guy that that thinks that hey, nobody's going, yeah, yeah, I ain't worried about it. Yeah, then you got an advantage over that guy. But if a guy prepares for him, you really don't have an advantage. Things are still 50-50. It depends on okay, are you quicker? Are you faster? You know, you're going to be able to fake this guy out and then it so and get him off his game. So that's just kind of a it's just you know one of those what if scenarios. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I mean, could Mike Tyson be Muhammad Ali. I mean, <laughs> but uh, ultimately, probably whatever happens, you know, you, there's going to be a group that's not going to be happy. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I think so. The, the second I heard about this new rule, um, it immediately brought me back. And we were, we were talking off camera about my martial arts experiences in Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it immediately brought me back to me being in my MMA club and training with my the first black belt in judo. Spent years in America, never did I trained with a few met a few black belt judo guys in America. I think I got one yeah. guy to come who wants to train with us. But I never really trained with someone who was like high level, high level yeah. judo guy, right? So yeah. a, a Japanese high level judo guy comes into our MMA club and wants to grapple with me and he's bigger than me and i'm thinking all right well let's see how this is going to work um and he was and we it was nogi because you know it's we're doing mma so before i said let's just do mma and he's like no i don't i don't want to get punched in the face let's <laughs> let's let's do just grappling all right cool yeah and um and he got me in, he got me in a really great hip toss and a kisakatami mm -hmm. and then my ribs are really hurting after that but outside of that, once we hit the ground, he was kind of a fish out of water. Like he, yeah. he, 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 he tried to grab onto my MMA shorts. Um, they told him, Hey, you can't grab onto the shorts. And he had a, he had a grip issue. He had a lot of grip issues, which, which allowed me to take an advantage. So I guess this leads me to this next question. <clears throat> and I've seen this a lot in Japan. He's not the only one. I've seen a lot of black belt, Japanese black belt judo guys come into BJJ classes with the gi on. So now we've we've eliminated the idea of the grips. Now yeah. we have the same grips, but they still had a really big issue. Great throws, 
great takedowns, but they had a really big issue with those takedowns. The second I started throwing in leg grabs, like that was, yeah. that was yeah. kind of their problem. If they can, they can, yeah. they try to come in for the grip fighting. The second they come in for the grip fighting, I slap their hand away and blast a double blast a single, or even while we're getting in the clinch, I come in for a clinch Greco Roman style, yeah. start bear hugging them and then grab their legs and go for a, for a double. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of hard, they had a big hard time with that. Or they turned their back. <laughs> that was another thing they did. Yeah. They would turn yeah. their back for a hip toss. Yeah, they just I just, yeah. I just, yeah. I just immediately grow, jump up, take their back, and start choking them while still standing. And they'd fall over, and they'd be tapping before they hit the ground. So these were the kind yeah. of the problems that they had with it. Of course, minus the last situation. <laughs> I don't think the last situation will be happening in judo because there'd be a radical rule change for that one Mm -hmm. but everything else kind of does fit into the same box of if they what kind of leg grabs they do allow in judo what would that look like so you were saying at the olympic level the guys that i trained with they weren't on the olympic team but they were some of the guys almost were some of the guys almost were like they were they were high level enough that they were in the prospect of yeah. being in the Olympics. Well, and, and this goes back to and, and I'm not. And then and then one big, big cavet. I'm saying, I am not. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. I'm not old, yeah. old, but I'm old enough to to not not be messing. I shouldn't be so, fucking around with that stuff. <laughs> yeah. so, for, and, and look, and again, we're we're talking about guys in Japan that want to go to the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're it, say the IJF does pass this and they and they reinstate leg takedowns. OK, you will see some tweaks made in their training. Now they will be addressing those. All right. Because what will probably typically happen is because okay, when you watch judo, a lot of them are really kind of they're more upright than BJJ players. Can we agree on that? OK, so right. you'll see a change in their posture. It may not be as low as a BJJ player's. But it'll be low enough for them to think, okay, if he does try the legs, I'm in a good position. I can sprawl. I can counter. I can, it, it, that's So there's going to be little tweaks made to their game if leg grabs are implement, implemented to, to that degree. I mean, I mean, to me, that's kind of – I never griped about any of the rule changes over the years, okay, because part of being judoka is it's a sport, okay, and – in sport, rules change. You got to adapt to the rules if you want to continue to be involved in that sport. So, you know, and, and uh, um, I do know, because, you know, this I'll tell you, all right, because there's a lot of people. I mean, they, again, it's like after our last Olympics, and you know, I, I got a lot of Facebook friends that are judoka, and it's like, They've been bitching about leg grabs for 20 years, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, they don't enjoy it. They don't, they, you know, they watch the Olympics and they watch it because they enjoy judo, but then they, they gripe about it, right? Because, well, there's no more, if, if he would have, I mean, it's just nuts. Okay. <laughs> I enjoy the sport as it is. Okay. Every aspect of judo. And I think I said this the last podcast, whether, whether it's gi it's an Olympic IJF rules judo. If it's freestyle judo, gi or no gi, I like it. Okay. I enjoy the different platforms for judo. Okay. Personally, do I think they need to initiate leg grabs? No. Do, do, do I care if they? No. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I've got a lot of people. Because, you know, I teach I teach judo at a BJJ school, okay? After the Olympics, I can't tell you how many BJJ guys come to me and go, Coach, we watched judo for the first time. And, and, and it, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the differences. All right? And, and so, and, and to hear them talk about it and talk about how beautiful they thought the throws were, it, you know, I mean, I'm, it just, it really turned a lot of people on, uh, you know, to judo. And I, and I just, I kind of think they're, they, they're getting away from the leg grabs was enough 
to distinguish them differently enough that it it gets attention, you know, and and so that's just that's just where I'm at on it, you know, and 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 it's uh, I'm just the, I'm not going to bitch about the rules. I mean, you, you know, the IJF is going to do what the IJF does. They've always done that. You know, they don't care what other people think. You know, <laughs> they're going to do. What they're gonna do. So, you know, it's just the way it is. So, but, yeah. And so, uh, my other question, um, what what do you know so much about the rumors? Because this is the rumor I heard. It's a rumor. So far, even the idea of late grab is kind of a rumor, too. Yeah. Um, that leg grabs were taken out because one of the Japanese judokas ended up getting his knee injured, or his he, got, he ended up getting injured in a in a match in a in a in competition. And that, that's why they changed the rules because one of their guys got hurt. And I've heard that rumor a few times from a few. You days. know, I I never heard anything regarding injuries. Okay, as far as leg tackles now. Connie Basami, which is leg scissors takedown. Okay. That was deemed illegal. Uh, I want to say, man, and somebody's probably going to ding me on this, but it was back in the 80s, I think. Okay. And and so um, and the reason they did that was because injuries. All right. Because you got somebody doing a leg scissors takedown. And they're coming in at your knee, at knee level like they're sliding into home base. You, you know what I'm saying? And they're taking people's knees out and ending careers. And so there was a little – when the IGF says, hey, we, we've got a lot of injuries happening here. We need, and so they, they made that – they made that particular technique, uh, leg attack technique illegal. And uh, so – but as far as the you know the the leg dives and the single and double leg takedowns, that was just more of an aesthetic thing because they wanted to be look a little bit different than than you know uh, BJJ and wrestling and you know because there were just I, I think they thought well okay there's too many similarities here you can't really with the leg takedowns you can't distinguish judo from BJJ maybe you know what I'm saying and, and just so. And just so that no one dings you, it was yeah. Yasuhiro Yamashita who ended up with a broken ankle from a flying scissor. Yep. Um, ankle from the technique endangering his entry in 1984, yep. Los Angeles. And Yamashita, y y Yamashita, uh, you know, yeah, Japan's legendary. Yeah, 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 Yamashita. Yeah, and he was yeah. one of the. He was yeah, and this has to do specifically with the one, the Kani Basami, the flying scissors. The yeah, flying yeah. scissors sweep. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're being very specific here. Yeah. It wasn't really leg grabs. Leg grabs are, are kind of a different, a different thing. And I think this is what's happening, right? Is people, you know, how urban legends work. You'll grab one story, the other story, you link them, yeah, and you will blend it with the yeah, other. Yeah, you'll blend it with the other. So it wasn't the, yeah. the, the the rumor of and, some guy getting hurt. It was a different. Thing. And then okay, and so uh, like Korean Sayanagi or the reverse Sayanagi. They made that illegal. Well, they really didn't give a reason. Well, then later they gave a reason that was because of injuries. But I kind of thought, nah, that's BS because that, I've seen more injuries from other throws, you know, than I don't. I don't think I've seen a single one in competition from a reverse Sanagi. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's like I said, the IJF kind of does take one or two and. And that was the one rule change they made that just absolutely made no freaking sense to me because I was like, okay, are we taking the athleticism out of judo now? Because it was, it was a cool athletic move, you know, and, and, and I'm like, what the hell, you know? And, and so you, you tend to, you know, judo was born of innovation. Okay. And so if you're making all these techniques Ill illegal to do, you're really, in a sense, killing innovation. Because where does innovation come from? Okay? Not you, not me and you getting together and doing judo by ourselves, but if you're active in the sport, that's where it comes from. You know, you find yourself in an unfamiliar situation, and then all of a sudden you spin and do something, you go, oh, okay, 
it, and I mean, that's where it comes from. It, 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 you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what do you and I, and I guess this, and I'm not going to go too far on this thread because I want to keep it to the topic yeah. of leg grabs and judo, but this really boils down to do you do martial arts for sport or do you do martial arts for self-defense? And no, yeah. we're not going to go and answer that question today. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you that right now. I, I want to keep this podcast uh, within 30 minutes if I can, and I don't want to go down that road. But that is something you should be thinking about. And if you are thinking about that, please put it in the comments. Why are you doing martial arts? Is it for sport or are you doing it for self-defense? And what's that mean to you? We're not going to answer that question. We're going to go back to leg grabs and judo. Now, <laughs> so, so looking back to leg grabs and judo, before yeah. we wrap up here, are you for him or against him? No, I, I, I tell you, uh, look, there's a reason I like freestyle judo. Okay. I, you know, we, we kind of, you know, Florida freestyle judo, we, we kind of just formed. All right. Because we kind of took a different rule set than everybody else. We, we did away with the EPON score. Okay. And so we kept a BJJ similar scoring format. The only thing that we really changed was if you hit a turn throw, like a big throw, we're going to give you five points for that instead of – because in a normal BJJ tournament, no matter what throw you hit, you just get two points, okay? So if you hit a more technically difficult throw, that deserves more points, okay? So, so that's kind of what we did. And and my vision was with Florida Freestyle Judo, and this because our rules, again – they're a little bit different from BJJ, a little bit different from even freestyle judo as it's taught over here in the U.S. So I just made a few little changes to it, and we just kind of started using that format because I really think as a judoka, we need to be well-rounded, okay? We need to know how to defend a leg lock. Leg lock. We need to know how to put one on, we, <laughs> okay? We need to know that stuff. And so that's where freestyle judo comes in. Okay. Now, as much as I enjoy that format, I love watching the 2024 Olympics under their rule set. Okay. I love watching freestyle judo under that more accepted rule set, but also like what we came up with. Okay. I like the no gi judo. I just, I just think if, if I'm kind of a throwback to where, you know, because basically BJJ, Sambo, these are arts that came from judo. So I just think we need to, the more well-rounded we are, you know, as judoka, it, it you know. So that's just my opinion about it. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, um, personally, that's what. And again, this is why I say I, I like all the different organizations and their different rule sets. And, and 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 but yeah, I mean it's it when I when we started doing our freestyle judo scrimmages, okay, it broke my heart to see a judo a judoka hit a beautiful throw, and then after because it's it's a continuous action since we did away with the e pawn, you know, your throw doesn't end the match. So you've got to go immediately into some groundwork, okay? But to watch somebody hit a beautiful throw and then not be able to capitalize on that with a submission of, of some kind, that, that, that kind of broke my heart a little bit. And, and again, these are, we're not, I mean, these are everyday people that are that are practicing judo. We're, we're talking about the, the average person here. And, and so, uh, I mean, I, I kind of give kudos for because I, I I told Andrew I said okay I'm getting plenty of BJJ let's let's bring a Sambo guy in here because I want to learn leg locks I want to learn how to defend those things I, I mean that's that's me from a judoka's perspective all right I, I don't want to learn Sambo you know but it's like hey you know just add some stuff to what I'm already doing and that's kind of my mind, my mindset about it and uh is that, is that, is that judoka or is that kajikembo do i uh, is that is that the judoka part or is that the kajikembo <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, uh, i don't know about that one so yeah. it's a, it's a, 
So here's another thing. Um, and I wrote this down so I wouldn't lose track of it. As a coach, as a judo instructor, how do you split the time? This is something that John Hackleman's always talking about. How, like, and this is why in his program, he does away with certain things. Like, in his program, he comes from a traditional Kaji Kembo background. We're not going to yeah. go too far into that, like we said earlier. But what he found was, hey, I only have so much time in the day. And now we're going to split this conversation. We talked about the professional Olympic fighter, and now we kind of transition to the everyday guy, like you just talked about. You have most of you guys, your scrimmages are everyday guys. For our everyday guy, who is, if you're a coach, the majority of your students, I mean, even if you're a top coach, the majority of them are going to the Olympics. There's only, yeah, there's, there's, exactly. only there's only so many spots available for that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if I were to just run the numbers, I'm sure even if you were running a huge school, about 80% or more are not going to go to the Olympics. <laughs> if you were really lucky, you'd have those numbers. <laughs> if, uh, the number's if, probably yeah, going to be left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you had, if you had 20% yeah. of your guys in the Olympics, damn, like you have one hell of a team. Yeah. So exactly. most likely, realistically, it's like oh, 1% or 2% yeah. of your students yeah. are going to be going to the Olympics. Yet at the same time, some of these places will dedicate 100% of their time and their training to send everyone to oh, the yeah. Olympics. Yeah. Well, so how, how and, do you how do you split the time? Where do you where do you draw the line for well, yourself? I, 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 and I really think now I, I'm I'm going to talk to you as a judo coach. Okay, you if, if you're teaching judo and you're about sport, that's what you're concentrating on. Okay, and, and I can tell you that 100% uh you know we were just discussing before the podcast you know andrew you know went to his first judo tournament down here in south florida well that's pretty serious judo in in south florida okay and, and i kind of give andrew a heads up i go hey look this is your first tournament there's no slouches <laughs> down there you're gonna you know you're gonna run into some pretty serious judo team. and so you know we got there and we found that to be the case now we're, we're sitting there watching Okay, now I'm watching. There's a mat off to the right, and sometimes I'm not the best coach. But anyway, I'm I'm watching two 13, 14 year old boys go at it. Okay, these guys are grip fighting. They're turning out of throws. Okay, I mean, I'm watching two kids. <laughs> okay, and and and, and they're. And, and so I'm sitting, I'm going, wow. I said, whoever their coach is, he's passionate about this. Okay. And I nudged Judo or, or nudged Andrew. And I said, remember me telling you there's some serious Judo here? And he, he said, yeah. I said, look over there. So he's watching these two on their orange belts. Okay. So, and, and he's, and, and his eyes got like this because he's thinking, oh crap, if those are kids, what am I going up against? All right. So, you know, there's a lot of judo instructors and, 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 and they're teaching this with a passion that they want their kids to be world champions. Okay. And so it's, I don't think the concept of the average judoka are in these people's minds. All right. And, and I'll give you another example. I, I trained for uh, a, a couple of years with Japanese instructors. And at the same time, I had my judo program going. And, and I remember having a conversation. Okay. And I said, I got a lot of kids in my program. I said, but none of the parents want to want them to compete. Now I'm looking at three Japanese instructors. And they all looked at me with this question mark on your face like, you're doing judo. How the hell can you not compete? So you see the mindset? You know what I'm saying? So you, you kind of, you know, but we've got different coaches with different minds. You know, some coaches just want to teach inside their own little bubble and they won't even step foot in, in a competition. So, you know, for me, you're talking about a balance, Okay. I train people to not to memorize throws, but to fight with judo. Okay. Be it on the mat or on the street. 
And so you, you don't see too much of a difference in my style of judo and, and, and what I do, whether I'm applying it in, in either situation. So that's just, that's kind of where that's at. And, and my mentality is I'm going to teach you to the best of my ability. And so when somebody like Andrew says, Hey, I want to compete. Okay. You know, and, and we're, we're, we're really almost already there. So it's in the back of my mind, but I think what I'm doing, and it's because I'm silently pushing them in that direction. You know, Hey, what good is it to just memorize a technique? If you, if you can't, if you can't utilize it in a sport or even in a fight, it's, it's absolutely no freaking good. I mean, you know, why are we doing it? You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that's where my mindset's at. So, you know, because I know what I'm dealing with on the outside. I mean, it's if, if I didn't think Andrew could do, you know, decent against what he was going up against, I'd have went no Andrew. You know, but I was, you know, and he walks in as as a Yon Q rank, and he goes up against a black belt. And real short, the skill gap skill gap should have been that much. But it was like that much, and and so, you know, it's just at the end of the day, it's it's kind of how serious we want to be as coaches, and uh, um, and I think the coaches really, especially here in the United States, they're passionate about what from what I've seen, they're passionate about about judo, and and and, and they want to see their kids accomplish great things in judo. I think. <laughs> The big holdback here is the judo organizations here in, here in the States. That's the holdback. They're dropping the ball, you know, because I haven't seen a judo coach yet that was not passionate about serious, serious judo. So. All right. So if I heard the answer right, if you want to be doing – if you're going to do judo and you want to be in the sport of judo, you should be dedicating as much time as you can. Yes. Yeah to compete yeah. in that sport, to keep up with the sport of judo. If you want to have the balance, then these are questions that student, the student and the coach have to ask themselves yeah. when they practice. Why are you doing this? What's what's driving you? And make sure not to lose. And I, I guess I can grab that advice and really apply it to any martial art, but, <laughs> but really that's what well, it comes to. I mean, to. look, if, if you're coaching a sport, you need to know what they're doing in your sport, Right. And, and and so it, it, I mean, just like we went down south. I mean, he he saw for the first time. He's like, again, he's looking at orange belt kids, and he's like, man, they're you, you think they've been doing it for thirty years, you know? And I, and and I'm sitting there and I'm going, this coach is just drilling, drilling this stuff, drilling this stuff, drill, you know? And I and I went, this is why. So because you know. Typically in in the southern portion of Florida, there's some serious judo down there, and and so it was a good opportunity. It was a good first tournament for him because he he never experienced one, and and so. But I wanted him to see this is how serious it is, you know. And it even gets, I mean, I mean it, it's, <laughs> and uh, but. There's no saying if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly bear. You know, I mean, if you don't want to be a grizzly bear, maybe the woods ain't the best place for you to be. You know, so, you know, so, and, and we, but we have those kinds of coaches too. So, again, if if you're going to do it, you're going to do it for sport, you got to be serious. So, you know, a lackadaisical attitude or, or oh, okay, well, we'll just go. You know, it's, it's not a field trip. And again, I, I don't think it's, and that's what I want to, I want to make, I want to make really clear. It's not that they have a lax attitude. It's just, again, like you were saying earlier, depending on how what kind of program you're running, it might not be the goal that they have in mind. That's it. Like it, it, maybe the kids they have, the parents they have, don't have that goal in mind. And yeah, no. and that's and I think that's where it really comes down to. And then also well, going yeah. back to what I said about only having a certain amount of time, a certain amount of hours in a week, a certain amount of homework that needs to be done from school, certain amount of school mm -hmm. activities, and you start getting life involved in this little matrix of how much time do you have to train, and then you end up 
with these kind of questions. So I think yeah, yeah I think that's 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 really good. That's a really good way of looking at it. a balanced way of looking at it is always keep in mind what is it that you want as a coach, and what is it that what's the message your parent? Because I'm sure you've had this as a coach. Some parent comes in and they want their kid to be some competitive uh, oh, yeah. judoka. In my case, it's I, kickboxing. I, you know, but and then and the, but the kid himself, <laughs> the actual kid, is not giving you any of those signals. <laughs> Let's warm up. Okay. Let's stretch. Yeah. All well, right. I mean, and I, I, literally had, I literally had a conversation similar to this earlier, and I remember I had this. I had this. Uh, she was a teenage girl, and. She says, I want to go against that guy. And she picked this guy out from across the room. And and, and everybody kind of saw my reaction to her. And it, and it was like, oh, okay. You know, and, and because I'm thinking, if she's not afraid to get on a mat with that guy, that's somebody I could do something with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so you you as a coach, you look for certain mindsets. And and so stuff like that, you know, when you see stuff like that, it's just as a coach, you're, you go, mm, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, you know, you know, this is somebody that I could focus and I could, it, you know, that could get to a very high level in 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 sport judo. So you you look for things like that. Uh, uh, the, you know, you have different mentalities and some mentalities, but you don't know. You, you don't. I mean. I've had kids, you know, start off and, and and they're just as meek and as shy and as standoffish as they could be. But, you know, the, the second they earn that yellow belt, I've I've created a monster, it, it, you know, and I can't turn them off. And, and so it's just, it, it's it's an amazing world. But again, you got to, and I'm very sport focused. I mean, I am. It's like, hey, you know, if we want to do this, we got to know how to scrimmage with it. We got to know how to ran Dory with it. We got to know how to compete with it. And that's, and that's basically, you know, uh, uh, my thing. So, um, you know, and, and I'm always, you know, how do I make athletes better? How do I, you know, how do, how do I implement things that will give them the upper hand? I mean, that's, that's where I'm at 24 seven. All and, right. So and I guarantee you. And there's coaches out there that are 100% more successful than I am. And so, but I know they probably have this same mindset. It's just probably more magnified. And, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I'm getting nicer because, you know, I'm trying to get into heaven now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, uh you, you, you know, you, you, you can't, you, you can't play at judo, especially if you want to be involved in the sport. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you know that. I mean, so, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you, you're not going to tiptoe through the tulips if you want to do MMA. You've yeah. got to take yeah. that. Yeah. So for those of you watching, we're going to wrap up right now. But the topic at hand was leg grabs in judo. What do you think? The jury's not out on this, as we just discovered. You know, they're still discussing it. It still hasn't been implemented. There's still rumors about whether it's going to be implemented and what it's going to look like. What do you want it to look like? Why? What's your background? Go ahead and throw it in the comments and share. If you liked what you saw, share, subscribe with your friends. Um, where can people train with you, Baron? I know you said Florida. What's the name of the school again? Uh, you, you can look us up at either at Carlson Gracie Winter Haven or Winter Haven Freestyle Judo or Florida Freestyle Judo, either, either one. And I will put a link in a card. So at the end of the show, you'll see the What is Country Camera Podcast, but there should be a card hovering around here the whole time that'll give you a link to their YouTube channel um, so you can check out the, some of the work from there. Well, Baron, thank you so much for taking the time to share that information with us. And for the rest of you, one of these episodes once a week, Social Jello with Angelo podcast, Conversations with the Backfist. Catch you next time. <laughs>